Starting with something large and taking away what you don't want is how complex parts have been made for centuries. But machining has a downside. Subtractive manufacturing, as some people call it, uses a lot of energy, and it creates a lot of scrap. Here's a good example, making airplane parts. Some can be as large as a refrigerator, and a casting can weigh 4,000 pounds, and it may have to be ordered as much as a year in advance. When the part is finished, after machining it for hundreds of hours, as much as 90% of the material will have been removed. Scientists at NASA have been working on a new way to make parts. Electron Beam Freeform Fabrication, or EBF3 for short, builds a part by adding material, not subtracting it. Using EBF3, NASA can create full-size aircraft parts layer by layer, starting with nothing. Here to give us a brief look into EBF3 is Karen Taminger. I'm Karen Taminger. I'm a materials research engineer at NASA Langley Research Center. I'm a metallurgist. I work with various different aluminum, titanium, aerospace alloys for aircraft and space applications. And I've spent the past seven or eight years working on developing the electron beam freeform fabrication process. Electron beam freeform fabrication, or EBF3 for short, is a metal deposition process that we've been developing over the past several years to reduce the lead time, reduce the cost, and improve the performance of structural metal components in aircraft and spacecraft. We started looking at EBF3 for aircraft components to improve the performance, but we soon realized that this also had applicability in space because you can't take everything with you. With long-duration space missions on the horizon, we saw this as an opportunity for building replacement parts and spare parts on demand rather than trying to bring a warehouse of replacements with you. We started with simple shapes because we needed to figure out exactly how to make this process work before we got into complexity. This is an example of a simple aluminum part that we built early on, and the real goal at that time was to show that we could build a high-quality geometry with excellent mechanical properties. The, the novelty of the E-beam freeform fabrication process is that you build up material, so you only put material where you need it, as opposed to starting with a large block of material and machining away the part that you don't want. We specifically chose 2219 aluminum, which is in the International Space Station and the Space Shuttle, and TIE 6 4, which is used in many aircraft today. As more aircraft are moving towards composite structures, titanium is the alloy of choice for compatibility with composite structures, and so TIE 6 4 was a logical choice for development. This slide shows some of the typical microstructures and mechanical properties we achieve with 2219 aluminum. The microstructures show that we can either get equiaxed or dendritic grain structures depending on where in the deposit and the processing parameters we select. On the right hand side we show some typical yield and ultimate tensile strength properties and the elongation from those tensile tests. The light colored bar is E-beam freeform fabricated, followed by a T62 typical heat treatment. The gray bar beside it is the typical T62 properties from a handbook. This shows mechanical properties for TIE 6 4. The as deposited properties are shown in white and the annealed properties in gray. And what you'll notice is that straight off of the machine, the mechanical properties for TIE 6 4 are equivalent to annealed rock product. If you would like a higher pencil strength, you can go through a typical heat treatment that would be used for TIE 6 4 and achieve similar properties with the E-beam freeform fabrication as you would in traditional rock product. Our end goal is to make parts that do not require machining so we can build them net shape. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. As an example, this is a part that we built early on. On the left is the as deposited. We took that part and finished machined it, so the part on the right shows after machining. We removed about an eighth of an inch on the inside and outside of the part, so you can see the minimal machining required even early on in the process. Since then, we've made great strides at improving the control so that we can build closer to the net shape. 
This is another sample part that we built, again on the left showing the as deposited and on the right the finished machine. In this particular example, note the uniformity of the wall thickness in the as deposited part. That really simplifies the machining operation. As I stated earlier, we started with simple geometries to show how the process works. Now that we've got confidence in the process, we're starting to explore more complex geometries and being able to build things that you couldn't build otherwise. This is an example of how we can change the geometry and, and really control the direction of the process and successfully build a complicated shape. This is a titanium part that we've built showing the side and top views. Notice that we took the geometry and were able to turn that oval shape to put a twist into the part. This was a challenge both from a programming standpoint and from a building standpoint. This part actually has a fairly good surface finish as built, but if we wanted to further refine that surface finish, smooth it out, you could either do additional machining or a secondary beam pass where you melt that surface to give you an RMS finish of about 8, which is close to a mirror surface. This is another titanium part that we built, again showing the side and top view. The real goals for this part were, first of all, to show that we could change the geometry from a circular cross-section to a larger D-shaped part, and second, to show an unsupported overhang. With EBF3, we can now start building parts that have much more intricate geometries than could be conventionally machined. This is a starting point. It's a cylinder that's about 10 inches across, 14 inches high, and was built in a couple of hours using TIE 6 4 after we built the cylinder, we tilted the cylinder to add the flange coming around the outside. The purpose of this part is to hold guy wires away from a propeller. The shaft of the propeller comes through the center cylinder and the guy wires hold blimp fabric out of that propeller by going through the flange. This is an example of an EBF3 part that we could build in a single operation with multiple setups that were all programmed. In comparison, if you were to build this conventionally, it would either require hand welding separate components together or a lot of machining at complex angles. One final note on this part is the only portion that needs to be machined is the inside of the cylinder because that's the only place where mating parts will exist. The rest can remain as deposited. There are other additive manufacturing processes for metal, typically using powder feedstock and lasers. But EBF3 has some major advantages for building large-scale structural components. First, EBF3 using a wire feed has far more efficient use of the feedstock material and better control of that material. Second, electron beams are far more efficient than lasers in the power consumption. And third, EBS3 offers a wider processing window for a variety of materials. EBS3 is really conducive for building larger scale parts because you're feeding the material directly where you need it. In addition, we've also developed a vacuum barrier system to allow you to do deposition outside of a vacuum chamber, enabling you to build parts of, of pretty much any size. The parts shown here are examples of internal braced structures for aircraft wings and fuselage sections. On the left is a conventional orthogrid structure where everything is straight because the manufacturing processes for conventional aircraft are easier if your ribs and stiffeners are straight. On the right, since we've got the flexibility of programmable control with the EVF-3, we can put the stiffeners wherever you want them in whatever shape. There are some aircraft performance benefits for curving the structures, and that's some of the work that we're now exploring at NASA. In fact, if you take an EBF-3 head with a vacuum barrier system and put it on the end of a robotic arm, you could foreseeably build entire aircraft wing sections or bulkheads without the need of a large vacuum chamber. If you recall back on one of the early slides showing a picture of a robotic arm mounted inside the space shuttle bay, you can do this and build parts of any size there's really no limit to the size and shape of parts you could build. Traditional electron beam welders are high power because they're designed for deep penetration welds. 
We specifically designed this system for low power and transportability for the applications in space, but they also have germane applications on the ground. Because they are lower power, they use less energy and there's less radiation shielding required. It also makes the system small enough that it can be transported and put into a variety of different locations for fabricating on demand. This was our first generation prototype. We started with a 7 by 9 by 9 foot, 100,000 pound electron beam welder and scaled it down to, to this system, which has a 3 foot cube vacuum chamber and total system weight of about 2,000 pounds. The real goal here was to be able to build a system that was small enough, light enough, and safe enough to fly on an aircraft for some of our zero-g flight research. Once we demonstrated the EBF3 process worked in zero-g, our next step is to build a smaller, lower power system that we could use for actual deployment in space. This is an example of our smallest system that we've built. It's really in more of a desktop scale and runs off of standard 110 volt, 20 amp power. Although the system is small, it doesn't limit the size of the parts you can build as much as you would expect, because you can pick this system up with a larger manipulator and give you access to virtually unendless size parts. This is particularly true if we're building in space, but working with the vacuum barrier system, this also enables large scale production with a small size unit. Depending on your application, there are different components for the EBS3 process that you may want to specialize to the parts you'd like to build. This is really the heart of the electron beam freeform fabrication process. On the left shows an electron beam gun, and on the right, the wire feeder. How you position that can be tailored to the size of the components and the complexity of the components you'd like to build. The, the lower picture shows a single wire feeder, but we can add multiple wire feeders into a system to enable either changing the chemistry by feeding different wires or increasing the deposition rate by feeding multiple wires of the same chemistry at the same time. NASA approaches solving a problem different from industry, partially because of our rigors for the space applications and the cutting-edge aeronautics research that we do. Our scientific approach to EBF3 is really focusing on understanding the process, learning how to control it to make EBF3 build exactly what we want. This is a picture looking inside our mid-size EBF3 system. It is still encapsulated inside of a vacuum, but the work that we're doing on the vacuum barrier systems would enable us to eliminate the vacuum chamber to be able to build components outside a vacuum. At the front of the image is the wire spool and the wire feeder that feeds the wire into the molten pool. Coming through the top of the chamber is the end of the electron beam gun. The electrons would stream through the center of that gun down to the base plate that you see at the bottom of the image. The base plate is translated with respect to the beam and the wire feed to build the components up in their layer additive fashion. The circles on the right and left of the image are other viewports for being able to monitor the process from multiple angles. The previous slide showed you the equipment and how the equipment is assembled for our mid-size EBF3 system. This picture now shows you the EBF3 system in action where the wire feeder is pointing towards us. The beam is not visible, but the beam is coming from the electron gun coming through the top of the chamber and the deposit is being built immediately below the tip of the nozzle. As I mentioned earlier, our mid-size system was developed for doing some microgravity research. We have demonstrated that the EBF3 process works as well in microgravity as it does on Earth. This picture shows our EBF3 system and our research team in NASA's C9 Zero-G research aircraft. The, the C9 is flown in a parabolic trajectory to induce 20 to 30 seconds of zero-g or longer periods of time for lunar or Martian gravity for research purposes. We successfully demonstrated that our EBF3 process does work in all of those environments and we're really excited about the prospects of building systems that may go in the future to space. If you'd like to learn more about electron beam freeform fabrication, 
Just Google the letters EBF3. That's Edward Baker Fox and the number three. You'll find lots of articles and videos describing the new manufacturing process. And if you want to learn more about other space technology NASA is bringing to Earth, you can visit them on the web at nasa.gov.